Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I want to bring you an, a thought that I had about XRP that I don't ever really hear anybody talking about, okay? We're seeing XRP moving through some pretty interesting changes lately. Uh, I say changes just because they're new to us, but I can guarantee you they've been on the forefront of the minds of the heads of Ripple for quite some time. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to bring you to the, uh, the website, uh, ripple.com. And I was, I was perusing it, looking for uh, new information, and something struck me because, well, let me back up here. So I've, I've talked to you about the importance of the Flare Network and what that token, the smart contract layer, uh, presents as far as an opportunity for people that want to already use the XRP uh, blockchain, especially banks and central governments that want to do cross-border uh, payments but also want to streamline their activities um, for both, you know, in both speed and, uh, well, speed execution and price. But the smart contract brings a whole nother layer, not of com not exactly complexity, but actually uh, ease of use, where a lot of companies have flocked to Ethereum to build apps on. Uh, for that purpose, Ripple is jumping on that bandwagon now too. So now this is what I believe is going to bring a lot of, many more users onto the uh the deal onto the ripple net so obviously they talk about you know a new era of finance all that kind of stuff for for these companies but down here i was looking and enabling the internet of value it says ripple's own source developer platform enables developers and entrepreneurs to build real world payment solutions on the xrp ledger now I already know that obviously there's gonna be lots of developers working on decentralized applications uh, using the Flare network, right? And I, I went down here and I've, I've used this analogy before, like the difference between uh, Mac and PC back in the 80s was that Macintosh did not want anybody who's anybody, except for them, building software for their computer. They guarded that um, technology uh, very uh, carefully, that source code. PC, on the other hand, said, hey, it's open source, go for it, guys. And a lot of people ended up wanting to buy PCs because of the sheer amount of diversity when it came to software that they could choose for their computers. With Macintosh, you had to use their stuff, and it's still like that today. And I'm sure many of you have heard the stories that really the thing that, that brought Apple out of complete collapse was the i, uh, uh, I'm totally, I want to say iPhone, but it's actually the... Uh, Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. You're all saying it right now. I guarantee it and throw it in the comments, but it's for the music. Um, iPod, the iPod. And so, and then obviously it, it, it went bigger from there. Well, I was looking at this and, it, and obviously the future of money is open. Unlocking the internet of value through the open developer platform for money. And it says right here, discover Ripple X. Right here, you can actually create a developer account and it says that Ripple X platform provides developer tools, services, and programs to integrate money into your apps. Now, what I believe is really interesting, and I don't think a lot of people are, are exactly ready for this. Um, I believe there's going to be many different types of financial applications for XRP. It's not going to be just um, cross-border payments between banks and governments. I believe you're going to see applications similar to uh, Square and uh, PayPal and other third-party uh, collection companies and payment companies that are going to want to use Ripple because once again, they want a company that they're doing business with, not a, a invisible community, right? Um, they want uh, essentially someone to sue um, and they want someone to control. That's just how business works. And so with this, I believe, you know, there's no denying XRP's speed forever. I, I didn't even want to talk about it because I was so about decentralization. But remember, in the world of cryptocurrencies, there's some things, even though it's decentralized, a lot of it's decentralized, you can't fight. And so what I'm looking at uh, Ripple is my big money maker in the short term, as opposed to, you know, hoping that some of these smaller projects get off the ground. And explode in price, and then my profits from Ripple, personally, that's what it goes into these smaller projects that I'm super, super excited about because of their true decentralized nature. And obviously, you guys know at the top of my list is Digibyte. Um, 
we can't stop the world economic system from changing, right? We can only change with it, and hopefully if you change soon enough, <clears throat> you benefit from the profits of that. I can guarantee you there are some amazingly brilliant minds right now working in this development center, working on decentralized applications for their companies because their companies are saying, we want to be a part of this. We don't exactly know how perhaps right now, but we're going to start working on it. And with the sudden price increase of Bitcoin, um, and you know that out season's coming, you know that pretty soon, once you see a certain level in that Bitcoin pump, you're going to see that money start to flow into these altcoins and then watch out below, you know, what happens in those prices. We all know what that's like. Um, anyway, I just I, I saw this and thought about it. And, uh, you know, for you guys that are on the fence, you know, are just hating Ripple, I, I really think you might be missing out on something. Now, here's the facts. We've seen just about every other coin in the world explode in price except for Ripple, right? It's pretty much stayed at the same price. For gosh darn, you know, two years, it seems like anywhere between 15 cents and, and 28 cents, it just sat in that range. And obviously, we've seen a pump, and I don't believe that's the uh, end of the pump. Um, uh, I was surprised, quite personally, that the flare uh, airdrop did not produce more, uh, let's say, excitement or hysteria or a pump in the price. Um, but then again, I was also wrong that the dump wasn't as big as I thought, too. Uh, I'm still waiting for a correction personally, but it didn't. I have money for pumps and I have money for dumps, so I technically I still have. Well, I still have all my XRP, and I'm just waiting to buy more if it goes lower. So, um, I'm playing the long game on this. But anyway, I just want to share this with you. I thought this was really interesting. Uh, just a super brief overview. I'm not the te most techie guy. I'm just the guy that's been an investor for quite some time and I try and look at the more logical side of things and seeing which way the world's going and most people don't look at the logical side they tend to look at the uh, emotional side so I'll give you an example the other day I got a comment on the uh, board that said uh, that I said XRP was going to 30 how's that working out for me now because it obviously pumped to I want to say mid 50s well I actually never said it was going to 30 cents I I said my price target was that it was going to be dropping to the mid 30s which is Pretty big difference on a percentage basis, but uh, I also didn't say I sold my Ripple or XRP to go buy more low at a lower price. So I'm just a different type of investor. I've got two bags of money. I have my holding bag, which when it goes up exponentially, I sell off. When um, something that I already own drops significantly, I have cash to buy, and so that's worked really well for me. Um, so then I'm not. I'm literally not FOMOing in or out on the wrong side. I always have money, depending on what side of the trade, I'm going to make money. And I treat those, even though I'm buying the same asset, uh, I treat them as two totally different pools of money. So if, I'll try and explain that later to you guys. Um, or shoot, I'll, I'll explain it right now. Imagine you had $10,000, and you split that $10,000 into two $5,000 pots. And let's say you bought Ripple, which I did. And I bought it, my original purchase recently. I, I started Ripple at $0.02. Cents. But um, originally, I started it at uh, 18 cents, and it pumped up to uh, 78 cents, and I sold it. As it can, I knew that it could have went higher. Actually, it did go higher. I, I sold it, sorry, at 71 cents, and, and that day it topped at 78. Um, but then eventually, a few days later, or a, a week later, we ended up repurchasing at 51 cents. Well, I still have that other uh, $5,000 pot sitting off to the side, and that's there in case it really plummets, right? So let's say it goes down to what I thought was um, uh, is go was going to be or could still be $0.35. Cents. Then I would engage that next uh, pot of $5,000 and purchase at $0.35. Cents. Well, so now let's say it goes up to $0.45. Cents. Well, I wouldn't want to sell my original um, uh, purchase when I repurchased the original at $0.51 because I'd be at a loss. But I could sell that second pot of $5,000 worth of Ripple at uh, $0.45, cents, and now I've made a great profit. And that style of trading has always done well for me. When, not say always. I learned from some very hard lessons, and uh, I started instituting that in mid-2018. And it's done really well for us. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll get out a whiteboard, hopefully, when uh, 
we get the studio made and, and I'll start uh, drawing it out so I give you guys an idea of how we do it and how it's uh, brought a lot more clarity and peace of mind to me yesterday you know recently uh, like I said the other day I was I was planning on picking up a handful of Bitcoin at uh, at 20 a little over 20,000 it pumped to you know punched through 20k and when I looked at it, it was at 20,500 we agreed to do it around the 20,200 mark and obviously I missed that it could have pulled off a uh, really nice profit uh, ironically I still believe like I said the other day we're gonna hit 23 and then we're gonna be hitting 27 uh, I believe sharply uh, quickly but um, I could be wrong about that too but anyway hope this helps you guys I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you later